Uh, thought I was living my dreams But things ain't always what they seem I was losing, living that life An illusion, I was living that life Hey, what's going on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, whatever form of social media this is on. Uh, for those of you who know me uh, and for those of you who don't, my name is Jimmy Miller. Um, and I just felt like making this video to explain to you guys uh, just a little bit about how I got started dancing, who I am, and how all of this came to be. There are a lot of people who are, who are wondering about my dance background or how I got started. So I feel like this video is necessary. So let's just cut to the chase, uh, as my boy Joseph Solomon would say. But um, I started dancing when I was probably about, I don't know, maybe six or seven uh, in church. And I initially hated dancing. I absolutely hated it because it was like the thing that boys don't do. It's the one thing that boys don't do is dance. But my mom was the praise dance leader at my church and she basically forced me to dance. Um, and I told her no, that I wasn't gonna do it, that boys don't dance. And I pretty much had a no nonsense mom. She slapped me upside the head. I was like, boy, you gonna dance. And then a week later, I was on stage with a flag in my hand. It under, my, under my breath, waving the flag, like I can't stand her. And then all of a sudden, you know, um, it just kind of grew and evolved from there. While I hated praise dancing, I had a guy that came to my church uh, by the name of AJ, or uh, Andre Chosen One. He came to my church and he started to do this thing called miming, right? And it's where people put on white paint on their faces and they wear, the gla gl wear gloves. And I know there are a couple of my, my viewers who have no clue uh, what miming is, but it's something that happens in mostly predominantly black churches. Um, they do this thing called pantomime, and they put on white faces and white gloves, and they dance to music and they mom to it, and it's very expressive. And so I begged my mom, I was like, Mom, like, let me mime and stop praise dancing. And so pretty much I got with that, and I started miming, and it was cool, and that's kind of how I learned the popping motions and stuff like that. Uh, but fast forward, I did that up until maybe uh, about 14. And I remember I went to like my first high school dance and I saw a bunch of guys in a circle and they were all like doing this dance thing and they were, they were doing hip hop and it was cool. And I was like, yo, this is dope. This is like what I do with miming. And so I jump in a cypher and I'm doing my miming stuff and I'm popping and they're looking at me like, dude, what are you doing? I'm not, I'm not doing what y'all doing. Like, no bro, chill. This it's not the same. So anyway, it, needless to say, man, I fell in love with hip hop uh, after that first high school dance. I went home, I researched a bunch of Omorion videos at the time because he was hot. Michael Jackson, Usher, uh, anybody who was, who was popping that who could dance at the time. I watched all their videos, I learned all the moves, all the stuff like that. And then so as time went on, as I went to more and more dances, I started to understand hip hop a little bit more. Um, I was able to like get in the cypher and not make a fool of myself and, and do the miming like here's a wall, here's another wall kind of deal. Um, so it evolved and it just kind of snowballed from there. So I kept miming, and I kept break dancing, and then before I knew it, I was teaching for a studio. It was crazy. Um, I was like, I don't even remember like how that happened, but I actually did not see a real dance studio until I was 18 and I was in college. Uh, I had not seen an actual dance studio with mirrors and bars and stuff like that until I went to see them. Um, and I, I stepped inside the North Rec. Everybody knows it um, for all the CMO students. You guys know it. I stepped inside the North Rec, went upstairs to the dance room, and my eyes just, my mind was blown. And I felt like I was at home. I was like, this is it, man. Like, this is crazy. Like, I'm here. I'm finally here. And I just spent like hours and hours and hours just going to the studio late at night um, or whenever I could. And then I got involved with the Showstoppers, which was like kind of uncommon at the time. Like, boys don't join the Showstoppers. Um, but I did. Um, and when I joined the Showstoppers, the, the Showstoppers kind of like they hadn't really won a competition in a long time. And I'm not going to say I was like the, the defining factor in the Showstoppers winning competitions, but 
all I'm gonna say is when I joined, we won the competition. So <laughs> um, we joined. We went to we went to our, the the annual competition that the showstoppers go to uh, every 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 year, and we we actually won. We kept, came home with the trophy, um, and then after that. Uh, I was like teaching at some studios around Cape Girardeau. And I was teaching at uh, during the summer, teaching at a studio um, over in St. Louis, but it wasn't St. Louis. Uh, Hip Hop Foundation Fanatics. Shout out to Nick Fury, um, the Fury of Styles, and then it just it just snowballed and built from there. So that's pretty much my dance story. Um, my background and, and testimony is that. As a kid, I definitely lived a double life. Um, I grew up in church, and I was, I knew how to play it. I knew how to fake it. Um, so like in church, I was the, the, the good Christian kid that I had to be because my mom was the praise dance leader of people. I was sort of like a PK, but not really a PK. Um, and I played a role in a position, but I didn't really have faith of my own. I didn't know who Christ was. Uh, I didn't know what it meant to actually be in relationship with him, but what I did understand was religion and how to look like I knew what I was talking about or, or doing. Um, and so it wasn't until college until I really understood that and Christ came and, and snatched me out of my, my mess about halfway through my freshman year in college. Uh, and. I, it was kind of, I just had this moment where I remember feeling like life was pointless and that, that there was more to life than this. I was like, I know there's more to life than this. And you know, I was in college and I was dancing at all the parties and I was the life of the party. And, and God just kind of slapped me upside the head and said, you know better. He said, you know there's more to life than this. And so that was the moment where I left and I went home and I decided that I was gonna make a real life change and that I was gonna give my gift completely and totally to God. And I went back to what I knew, which was religion. And so I went home, I didn't say a like long boo-boo prayer or anything like that, but I just was like, okay, God, I know I'm doing wrong, I know I need to get right. And, and then I went back to the religion and I made this long list of Jimmy will do, will do, will do's. And then on the other side, it was Jimmy won't do, won't do, won't do. And some of the stuff that was on it was like, Jimmy won't cuss. Jimmy won't drink, Jimmy won't do this, Jimmy Jimmy will be this, Jimmy will be that, will be, will be, will be, so on and so forth. Uh, but found out that that wasn't the right right method either. And then I got around uh, some, some good guys who really understood the difference between religion and relationship and how the two actually go together. Some people want to throw out religion and say say religion is, is not there, but, but Jesus doesn't throw out religion with it. It's religion and relationship and they fit together. And so shout out to Alpha Omega Theta, which is the Christian fraternity that I joined, and Truvon Alfred, Rashawn Henry, Kyle Bird, Rodney Bird, um, everybody that's ever poured into me and showed me the difference between religion and relationship. Um, and they, I got under their wings, and that was more like a turning point. And so my life has never been this one set moment where everything just fit together, and all of a sudden I was this perfect and holy Christian. No, it's always been a turning point. It's always been a, a, a series of stepping stones into becoming something different and better. And I'm, I'm still making those making those steps, still turning, and God is still working on me, so I'm a progress. I mean, I'm a work in progress. Uh, but yeah, so that's, that's pretty much my story. That's how I got started dancing, and that is how Christ has brought dance into my life, um, and also how Christ has kind of met me and it went through dance. But yeah, so yeah, if you guys got any questions, hit me up, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the follow button, um, anything on that. Just shout out to everybody. All right, one love.